I know, I'd probably know 100% if I just read the instructions, but I'm not gonna do that. How's it going guys? My name is Chase Farrow and welcome to my channel. It is a nice sunny day here in Texas, so I figured I'd take the opportunity, install a couple of aero bits, get the car cleaned up and get it ready for hopefully good guys this weekend. But in this video, we're gonna nerd out a bit. We're gonna talk about some aerodynamic principles. We're going to install a mod that I've been really, really, really looking forward to doing. Partially because I'm a nerd and partially because it's addressing something about this car that's driven me nuts ever since I got it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the car inside We'll get it up on the jacks, I'll get the front wheels off, and we'll get to talking. In the meantime though, why not have a little cold start? in it's off the ground but I haven't taken the wheels completely off yet because I actually need them to illustrate something now you read the title you saw the thumbnail you know what I'm doing I'm installing these guys if you're not hundred percent certain what these are these are fender ducts from electron motorsport or electron electron sport that's what it was electron sport USA and what they do is they make the vents on the fenders of the c5 Corvette functional now if you're only here to see the install you can go ahead and skip to this timestamp right here because before I get to that, we're gonna nerd out a little bit and we're gonna talk a little bit about aerodynamic principles and one of the things that has driven me absolutely nuts about the design of the C5. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so we're here at the wheel and I figured it was only appropriate that since we we're gonna be talking about nerd stuff, I'd put on my nerd glasses. Now, if you follow any form of racing, whether it be open wheel like formula style, the Mon style, GT, IMSA, you've probably heard the phrase turbulent air before or dirty air. Now as you're driving, whether it be on a highway or whether it be on a racetrack, the car is constantly having to force its way through air and that air is gonna have different densities depending on things like moisture content, what your uh, altitude is relative to sea level and stuff like that. But it's pretty much universal, no matter what you're going to have to contend with air. Now. Air can be used as a tool, but it can also be a little bit of an issue. Where it's a tool is when you see in race cars how they have the really complex aerodynamic bits, the wings, the like a Formula One car, you see them and they're just all these crazy angles all over them. All of that is there in order to use the air to help push it down to the road in the form of downforce. It doesn't matter how aerodynamically efficient you design a car, unfortunately, no matter what, simply by nature of it having rotating wheels, it's going to produce turbulent air. Now you might see some cars, in fact, uh, modern Formula One cars, the latest generation, they have wheel covers. The whole purpose of that is to help reduce turbulent air that's coming off the wheels. So as the wheel spins, it's causing the air around it to move in the same direction that it's moving. The problem with that is, is the oncoming air, as the car is presumably moving forward, the oncoming air is hitting and colliding with this air as it's trying to escape the fender wells. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna take this wheel off and we'll take a look at the fender well and we'll talk a little bit more about how the air coming in mixed with the air stuck inside creates a massive amount of turbulence and creates some issues. All right, so now that the wheel is off, we can kind of get a clearer picture of what exactly is going on inside of the wheel well whenever the car is in motion. Now, as I had mentioned before, as the wheel spins in this clockwise motion, or excuse me, counterclockwise motion, it's causing the air to do the same thing. And there's a couple of problems with that. One of them is it's sending the air forward, so it's clashing with air that's trying to move past the car. The other thing is, is you have all these flat surfaces in here where the air can't escape, so it gets stuck. And then on top of that, you have air that's coming in through the front, through brake ducts. So you have air trying to go this way, air trying to go this way, and that air has absolutely nowhere to escape. It can't go up, it can't go forward, it can't really go back. All it can do is go out. And generally speaking, it can only go out once it's hit a surface that forces it to go into a different direction. 
So what that does is it creates not only that turbulent air that I was talking about, it also creates a, an entirely new issue. And that is air that's pulled in from the front and is being heated by the brakes. And then so you have hot air trapped in there and that reduces the, the cooling efficiency of your brakes. Now you would think that that wouldn't be an issue because well the C5 has these vents on the on the fender. So you would think that they're functional, but they're not at all, like not even remotely. Unfortunately, like a lot of road cars, like the Mark V Supra, the Honda Civic, and many, many others, for some reason, they decided not to make those vents functional. Now, if I were to guess, I would say it's probably because they knew who they were marketing to and uh, they knew that a common complaint that would be made against the car would be that it'd be really hard to keep the doors and the fenders clean because that is going to allow some dust and debris to get through. That's my best guess. I don't really know what their thinking was, but that's an issue that we're gonna address today thanks to Electron Sport USA. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Now, the first thing we have to do is remove all these bolts here to give us access to this panel back here, and then we can get started. So as you can see back here, there's this plastic piece. This is actually the second bit that blocks that air back there. But to release that, we just unscrew these, that piece will come out and then we can modify it. All right, so here we have the piece. If I remember correctly, I do believe we have to recover these two clips off of here because I think we're gonna reuse those but I believe this piece is pretty much gonna go in the trash. I'm gonna verify that with the instructions, but look at that already. I can stick my hand through. Now I already cut out the template because I didn't really figure you needed to see me doing arts and crafts. I am gonna go ahead and get the cove in there. I was correct, uh, you do reuse those clips off of that little block plate thing. So really easy, all you do, slide them on there. Now it should go in like this should slide oh yeah okay just kind of slides into place oh, not like that like that there we go okay let me real quick yeah that works hello am i missing a clip i think i'm missing one of these Oops, that's unfortunate. Oh well, I guess I'll have to improvise on that. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this section all cut out. Basically, you're just cutting along here. The ducts come with a template. It's really simple, it's really straightforward. All you do is you take the, uh, I don't know if you can really see it, but basically it has a little template. You cut it out. Uh, as you can see, it basically traces the outline of the duct itself and then you just cut it. Now the first thing I do need to do actually before I forget is I need to drill these little guys because uh, you do have to drill holes because that's where these are gonna screw. So I'm gonna drill these, fold the tabs back, then I'm gonna cut it, so. All right, so I did something kind of stupid when I was putting the uh, driver's side back together. Thought I was recording, and apparently it wasn't. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm going to set the camera up over here, do a little time lapse of doing this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So I got all this out. It looks like I might actually have to remove this guy right here. It looks like it might actually kind of be in the way. Let me see if I can snake this through. No. Okay, yeah. It looks like that's gonna have to come down. Not a big deal. I think it's all seven millimeter. So I guess uh, I'm glad that I did show this side. 
So I originally was not going to. Okay, let's see. So what I am gonna do though, before this, I, there's some dirt in here. I would like to get it kind of cleaned out. So I'm gonna, real quick, That's not the, no, that's not DCPU. I'll have to look into that. If uh, if anyone knows off the top of their head what that is, um, let me know, like in the comments. I know it's kind of hard to see what I'm working with right here. Kind of down there, I don't know if this is really gonna be any better. But down here on the opposite side of this, there's a uh, one seven millimeter that holds it in. Unfortunately, you don't really have good access to it after loosening it or once like once the duct is in There's not really good access to it to tighten it back So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen it, but only just enough that I can kind of push it down Not like loose enough that it's actually going to not hold it anymore Just so I can maneuver this out of this side out of the way get the uh, duct in and then, uh, then we're good to go on that. All right, so let's get the duct in. Goes right in there. Also, I had mentioned on the other side that this was missing. So uh, the kit did come with these guys. I'm guessing that's what that is because it's the only thing unaccounted for. I know, I'd probably know 100% if I just read the instructions, but I'm not gonna do that. Now there's this little guy, presumably threads in here. And if I'm wrong, someone's gonna tell me in the comments, I'm sure. Okay, so I'm gonna start with these guys. So I feel like they're the ones that are gonna be the most annoying if they fall through. I cut right on the line and it seems that it was a little too, too much. As with every mod ever, that took longer than it was supposed to, but got it installed. They're both in, they look great, and I can't wait to actually test these out on the track. Uh, I'm probably gonna go to Good Guys this weekend, but that's autocross, so I'm not probably not gonna have an opportunity to really get my brakes really cooking. But LS Fest, I should have that opportunity. So, yeah, I definitely look forward to trying that. And the best part, the car's all clean and everything right now too, so that's where we're at. But I think we're gonna go ahead and end it there. Um, I've got a few more things coming up, side splitters, a couple other things. Let's, let's see what else. Ooh, steering wheel. That's one of the next things coming. I'm really excited about that. But yeah, until next time, that's it. So drive safe, throw your car batteries in the ocean, and I will see you guys later.